without a doubt, one of the most common questions I get is along the lines of something like, hey John, what foods or what meals should I be eating that are better for weight loss or better for fat loss? Now obviously, a loaded question as they usually are, but in today's video, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how there are actually some meals you can construct, some foods you can have that will aid you in reaching your fat loss targets. What's good YouTube, it's Coach John here. Thanks for stopping by, I hope you're having a great day. I just wanna let you know before I get this video started that first and foremost, if you're new, I drop weekly fitness content that's gonna help you get to your fat loss, fitness, muscle gain goals faster and in a more enjoyable way. If you're interested in doing that, of course, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and the like button. Now, I also wanna mention my free one-on-one -on -one coaching spots are open currently. If you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, you can click the link in the description down below. We can jump on a call and see if we'd be a good fit to do that. So as I was saying, a lot of people are always curious to know what meals are best for fat loss or if they should eat X food at X time or what food will be better than this food. Like for example, somebody asked me the other day, hey, I like eating chicken breast as my protein source. Is there a better source of protein that's gonna help me with fat loss? So obviously a lot of these questions are stemming from a place that uh, is, I don't wanna come off condescending, but it's a little bit ignorant to the fact that fat loss happens based off of fundamental principles. And obviously the ones that I'm talking about are the ones I talk about all the time, and that is calories in versus calories out. And of course, once you determine your calories, your macronutrients are gonna play a big role in terms of adherence, in terms of hormones, performance, and all these other things that also tie in importantly to fat loss. But when it comes to meals, a lot of people um, are under the impression that you can eat any foods that you want. And on the other end of the spectrum, there's the people asking me the question that are under the impression that you can only eat certain foods in order to lose fat. And of course, both of these spectrums are are somewhat wrong as the truth lies somewhere in the middle. In that case, there is always gonna be foods that will serve you and help you hit these fat loss targets a lot easier, a lot more consistently, and provide a lot more benefit in doing so than say other types of foods. Now, the way we're gonna categorize these two foods are the following way. One is gonna be known as nutrient dense foods, which essentially means foods that are high in micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and on the other end of the spectrum, we have foods that that people like to uh, quote as unhealthy, which are typically actually known as calorie dense foods. You got things like, let's use the classic example of a Big Mac or of chocolate bars or donuts, pizza, these types of things. And these are typically more calorie dense than they are nutrient dense. And so eating lots of calorie dense food means that they're typically void of a lot of vitamins, minerals that helps you with your nutrition and helps fill you up. Whereas obviously on the other end, you have foods similar to these right here which obviously if you follow me for a while, you know that I like to prep and eat these types of foods in bulk because believe it or not, they do actually help you with fat loss. So you're probably wondering, okay, tell me the secret foods. What are those, those ones that you have in there that you've uh, manipulated specifically for fat loss? And obviously, like I said, before you can determine what foods are gonna help you best in achieving fat loss, you need to first determine those numbers that I spoke about at the beginning. But I'm gonna assume that you have figured out your calories and your macronutrients. If you you haven't, I have videos specifically on how to do those things. You can click right there to check those out. But assuming that you're in a calorie deficit, now all you're really looking for is a way to hit those targets that's going to be most convenient, that's going to make sure that your energy levels stay high, that's gonna make sure your performance stays high, and make sure that you feel good along the way. Because obviously dieting and losing fat is never really a fun process for most, as it's always gonna feel better to eat more food than it is less food, at least if that food is good for you, if you prefer it and so on. So with that said, the food Foods that I'm gonna talk about that will actually aid in fat loss are foods that, given that they fit within these calorie targets, are gonna fill you up the most and are going to make sure that you are not experiencing hunger, that you're not low on energy day to day when achieving your caloric deficit. Obviously, these foods are gonna be micronutrient dense foods. And that is why I like to prepare my meals and have all micronutrient dense foods as the bulk of my diet. So, things like chicken or turkey, beef, uh, pork, these types of protein sources. Now obviously if you're plant-based, you would be going along the lines of quinoa, lentils, beans for your higher protein sources. But the point is, nutrient-dense protein sources. After that, you're gonna get nutrient-dense carb sources. So this looks like white rice, it's actually parboiled rice. So 
when it comes to nutrient dense foods, what you really want to look at is how nutrient dense they are. And a good way to tell that is to see how voluminous they are. So let me give you an example before I get too technical here. You'll see that I like to include a lot of mixed veggies in all of my meals. There's a very important reason for that. Mixed veggies, just vegetables in general, are arguably the best food that's going to help you in reaching your fat loss targets. Why? Because if I were to eat a massive plate of, let's say, broccoli, and I'm talking a huge bowl, right? A huge whatever Tupperware like I've got over there, a huge Tupperware of veggies. You can eat that whole thing. You're probably going to be extremely full, but you may have only eaten a hundred, couple hundred calories at most. Whereas if you were to eat the same volume, the same quantity of food out of a, let's say Big Mac or any sort of fast food, that's going to have thousands of calories and it might even fill you up less than the veggies do. So that's where we kind of start to see this comparison and that spectrum of nutrient dense versus calorie dense foods. And obviously, the more we move towards that end, we're gonna find foods like vegetables. Next up on the list, we're gonna find foods like fruits. Fruits are some of the best, if not tied with vegetables in a lot of cases, for the best possible foods you could eat to help facilitate fat loss. Unfortunately, there's been this terrible, terrible delusion and myth going around that fruits are bad for fat loss because they have sugar in them. First and foremost, I've made videos covering this on a scientific basis. Why not only is that not true, but fruits are arguably the best possible food you can have for fat loss because again, they are nutrient dense. They have a lot of fiber. The sugar they have is not processed sugar and so it doesn't react the same way in the body. And of course, if you eat a ton of let's say banana, which is the highest calorie fruit pretty much, if you eat a massive amount of bananas, you're gonna be full very quickly. It's not gonna be easy to binge on bananas despite what people think. Even binging on a banana or multiple bananas would only entail you ending up eating maybe a few hundred calories at most. But binging on Oreos, you could eat that entire pack and we're talking thousands of calories at that point. Not to mention one side of the spectrum is packed, loaded with vitamins and minerals. The other side is essentially devoid of them. So vegetables, fruits are going to be the top two foods that you should be including. Almost all your snacks, if possible, try to make them fruits or veggies. You're going to notice you're going to be hitting your targets much easier or even undershooting them while feeling better because you're not going to be nutrient deficient in any way. You're going to feel full all day long. You're getting lots of fiber. It's just a win-win with those. Next, you want to make sure that your protein sources. Protein in itself is already quite satiating and it's very difficult to find protein in very highly processed foods. But of course, you want to keep protein too as nutrient dense or as high volume food as possible. A great example of this on a meat eater standpoint is chicken breast. Okay, chicken breast is one of the best protein sources for the simple fact that it is almost purely protein. There's not nearly as much fat in that as there is in a lot of other meat sources, even like the turkey. Um, fish is also another great source, but of course salmon's still a little bit more calorie dense. So you're looking at leaner fishes that are almost all protein. In that case, you're good to go because it's very difficult to overeat on chicken breast, take my word for it. Carb sources, if we're looking at carb sources besides the veggies and fruits, we're also gonna be looking at high volume. So an example here, I have sweet Sweet potato. I like sweet potato because, well, it's sweet, it does taste good, but it is very, very high volume. It is going to be impossible to overeat on sweet potato, let me tell you. But even more uh, nutrient dense than this is Japanese sweet potato. If you were to compare the two, Japanese sweet potato has less calories per serving than a regular sweet potato or yam does. So again, you're really always just looking to see foods that have more volume in them that you can eat that have more nutrients and less calories. This is why water is so effective, not only for weight loss because of the fact that water is required in daily functions in the body and tons of other health benefits, but also the fact that you can fill yourself up completely with zero calories from drinking water. Of course, other carb sources similar to the ones that I just mentioned. So for example, parboiled or brown rice. Brown rice is the most dense of the three. If you wanna have things like pasta, that's totally fine too. Pasta, whole wheat pasta would obviously be a lot more voluminous a lot more nutrient dense than regular pasta. And basically these variations, and I hope the way I explain it to you here, really breaks down and shows you what foods are really best for fat loss. Now, when you're comparing nutrient dense foods, remember,
remember, one is not superior to another. It's just the more nutrient dense one is versus another, the better it could be for you to hit your targets since it's gonna be harder to overeat on that food. But remember, unless you hit those targets, you will not lose fat. So even the foods that I mentioned here, if I were to eat four of these meals in a day, I'm actually still gonna gain weight, even though they all fall onto that spectrum of nutrient dense foods. So again, the targets need to be determined first. From there, all nutrient dense foods, even all other foods can fit and have their place within those targets. But the more nutrient dense you can get, as explained in this video, the better off you're gonna be. So with that said, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this, please let me know down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this. And of course, as always, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and I'll be catching you in the next one. Thanks again, I'm out.